there, it's Scott Nicholson from Syracuse University School of Information Studies. And welcome to the next session in the Gaming and Libraries course. Now today what I'm going to talk about are the three main ways that libraries interact with games. This is going to be setting some context for the rest of the course. So the first main way the libraries interact with games is by having games as collections. Now a game is an information container. It's an information bearing object. It's just like a book or a video or a CD. It's, it's, a, it's something that contains information. And so libraries can treat the object just like they can treat anything else in the library. Which means they can have a community that they're supporting with this collection. They can select items for the collection just using traditional collection development methods because they know what the community wants. They're going to select items for a collection. They will then organize these items. They can catalog them. They can describe them in a way that it can be put into a database and found easily. They can help people find items. They can match people to the items they're seeking. And they can circulate the items. They can get back and receive the items. They can make sure everything's OK with it, and then decide at some point to deselect the items and remove them from the collection. So in that way, games are just like any other library item. It's just another thing that you're circulating. And you're going to hear, actually, this concept again and again from me, that we're trying to look at gaming as just one more library service. Now, for game collections, there are several ways those can be supported. In a public library, the game collection supports the recreational needs of your users. Just like we brought in those novels, all of that fiction. Oh my goodness, it's full of all of this filth. How dare you bring in fiction into the library? That caused a stir. And then, oh, we brought in music. What does rock music have to do with books anyway? Why are you letting people listen to music here in the library? How dare you? But then, movies came about. Oh, what do movies have to do with books anyway? Why is the library, the library isn't a video rental place. What's that all about? Games have uh, supplanted a number of these other information containers as people's primary recreational form of information. And so the libraries are supporting games in the same way that they supported the novels and they supported music and movies and games. It's just another form of media. Now in a school library, games will support the curriculum. And so many instructors use games to help them in teaching. And the library can be the place where they can find a person who can help connect the instruction to the game and also find some place where the games can be stored, where they can be shared, a place of control, just like they, the school libraries have other forms of media. Just like they, the teachers want to teach something on history, they say, hey, what movies do you have? The librarian can help them. They can say, hey, what games do you have? Again, the library can help them. In an academic setting, that's a combination of the two. And so some academic libraries like to provide for the recreational needs of their patrons. If they do this already in other forms, then games can fit in with that. Other academic libraries are supporting the curriculum because many schools out there are doing classes and uh, even degree programs in game design, game technology, game art game management. These are all different things that schools are looking at and these need to su be supported with appropriate media. And so there are going to be some games that are seen as required playing. You know, um, The Shadow of Col the Colossus, for example, for PlayStation 2, I hear cited constantly by people talking about the concept of a game as art because it tells a very tragic tale and it is a very different type of game. Uh, really, a, a, it was a game-changing game to use that. And I can see that being required playing in a game class where you're trying to talk about narrative in games, games as art. And so the libraries are supporting a variety of games to support their curriculum. And they're working with their faculty to do so, just like they support anything else. Now another place where we see games as collections is in special collections. And so large collections of games are being donated to the libraries, or libraries are building collections of games. And what you're going to see, as gamers get older, these collections that they've put together so, pa so passionately, they may no longer want or may not be able to have anymore once they pass away and will bequeath their gaming collections to libraries. And so I see more and more libraries getting collections of games from people out there who are passionate about them and want to make sure that they have a good home. So I see a real growth in special collections in games as gamers get older. So that's the first type, gaming as collection. Now, the second type, uh, the second way gaming is supported in a library is gaming as at will service. What I mean by that are situations where you can go into the library and at any point play a game. 
So this would be, for example, if you have games that are installed on your computers, that people can come in and engage with them whenever they'd like, or that you allow people to do web-based games whenever they want, or you have chess out, or you have a checkerboard out, or a jigsaw puzzle out, that people can engage with that in this at-will gaming. Now, I've seen some libraries start to play with at-will video gaming, where they have a PlayStation 2, or they have a Wii, or something like that out all the time. And so At Will Gaming provides an additional service for patrons who are already in the library or a service to bring people in. Um, it doesn't create good opportunities for interaction because people don't know when other folks will be there. If you put down a chessboard, unless I know when I'm going to have an opponent, well, a lot of times it's just going to sit there. If I have a board game sitting out somewhere, well, most of the time it's just going to sit there. I might come in with my friends and want to engage in an activity with my friends, and that might work. So as an activity to engage in with people that you came to the library with, At Will Gaming can work for that or as something for people to just come in and spend some time in the library engaging in recreation. At Will Gaming can work for that. Now the third type of gaming, and really the focus of most of the rest of this class, is gaming as special event. And so the idea of this is the library sets a time where people come to the library to play games. They say on Wednesday from 2 to 4, uh, this group of patrons, this teens or adults or anyone, is invited to come and play Wii, to come and play Dance Dance Revolution, to come and play board games, or just to come and play games, where you have a variety of games available. These types of programs have several advantages over the other things we've talked about. One, marketing. It's much easier to focus a marketing message in around a special event. Sure, if you have at-will gaming going on, you could put up a flyer that says, hey, here's some stuff, or have some, game, some items nearby. But in the, in the special event, it's a special time where you can select items that are appropriate and bring them all together. But another really important thing is it gives a time where people can engage with each other that they didn't come to the library with. It's at Libraries Community Hub. We'll talk more about the goals a little bit later. Um, also, a gaming program can be more acceptable than these other types of things because it's a special event. And so someone that's wondering about, well, should the library be supporting gaming? Well, all right, well, we're doing it you know, for two hours once a week. That's not as big a deal as, oh, yeah, they can come into the library anytime and play this game. Now, here's a model to think about. One of the most popular types of, of programs in a public library is story time. And story time, while it's very popular, would a library have a situation where you could walk into a room at any point and listen to someone telling a story? No, they don't do that. Even though it's a very popular program, they don't have at-will story time. And now, why is that? Well, you think about what's really cool about story time is it's a time where the kids come together and they interact and it's a very special thing. And the parents come together and they chat. And you take all of those pieces, remove story time and replace with gaming and you have the same type of event. Gaming is story time for the rest of us. When we get too old of hearing the stories, we come together and play games because now we're telling the stories through the playing of the game and through the interaction with each other. So those are the three main ways that libraries interact with games. Gaming as a collection, gaming as an at-will activity, or gaming as an event. Which one of these you do is going to depend upon what is the demographic you're trying to serve, what are the goals of bringing in gaming, what are the resources you have available for gaming, how will people who are not involved with the gaming activity react to what you're doing? These are all things you need to think about and then choose which one of these you want to spend your resources on. Because if you spend your resources in one place, it's not going to be as easy to do the other things. So you want to choose carefully. I know some libraries launch into gaming programs and try to do all of it. And that can be overwhelming. It can be difficult to assess, difficult to justify. It's much better to choose one of it, do that, assess it, see the difference it's making, and then move on to trying something else. Now, in tomorrow's session, I'm going to be talking about the history of games and libraries. Because for all of these things, I've traced them back over time, and I'll present to you a brief timeline of how we got to where we are today with gaming and libraries. So, that's enough for that. Again, if you want to talk about this episode, head to this URL and you can talk about it there. That's it. Bye-bye. <laughs>